What's the number one protein mistake that almost everyone makes? And are you making it? Let's find out. Protein intake recommendations are pretty much universally calculated in relation to a person's body weight, activity levels, and gender. For example, the US RDA for protein is based on a certain number of grams per pound of body weight. Then we have more specialized, sport-specific guidelines, which generally recommend higher intakes than the US RDA, but again, are calculated in relation to body weight. Unfortunately, there's a huge flaw with these common guidelines, and here's why. The problem is that any recommendation for protein intake based on your total body weight does not take into account your lean body mass. Now, lean body mass is simply your total body weight minus your total fat weight, and it's actually your lean body weight that's by far the most important number to consider when calculating your protein requirements. To put it simply, additional body fat does not require us to consume additional protein. Take, for example, these two individuals. Now, they both weigh roughly the same. However, who do you think will require more protein in their diet? The guy in example one or the guy in example two? The lean muscular individual in example one weighs 120 kilograms and has a body fat percentage of 10%. Whereas the obese individual in example two also weighs 120 kilograms, but has a body fat percentage of 40%. The lean body weight of our athlete is therefore 120 kilograms minus 10%, which leaves us with 108 kilograms. While well, the lean body weight of our obese individual works out at 120 kilograms minus 40%, which leaves us with 72 kilograms. If we were now to implement a protein requirement of say two grams per kilogram of lean body weight, then our athlete would require 216 grams of protein per day, compared to only 144 grams per day for our obese guy. So as you can see, even though these two men weigh the same, their protein requirements are in reality very, very different. And this is a huge flaw with conventional protein recommendations, which would have suggested the same protein intake for both men. Now we can argue till the cows come home as to the optimal amount of protein per pound or per kilogram of lean body weight. But what we can argue about is the plain and simple fact that excess body fat does not require additional protein consumption. And since most protein recommendations are based on body weight and therefore flawed, the only logical approach is to eliminate body fat from the equation. So in order to establish a safe, healthy, and effective protein dosing strategy, I'm going to recommend that you first establish your current body fat percentage, then subtract it from your total body weight. This will leave you with your lean body weight, which you can then use to calculate your optimal protein requirements with no gender specific adjustments required. Now, if you're not sure of your current body fat percentage, then you can measure it very cheaply using calipers or smart scales, or very reliably by hydrostatic weighing and most accurately by DEXA scan. So how much protein per kilogram of lean body weight is likely optimal? First, be aware that your age will have a bearing on your protein requirements. However, in contrast to what most people believe, protein requirements rather than decreasing with age actually increase. And this is because in later life, our bodies become less efficient at processing protein, requiring just a little bit more to be ingested. The following optimal daily protein intake guidelines are based on my analysis of a wide variety of study data spanning over three decades. Now I've divided the acceptable dosage range into three classifications, those being minimum, moderate, and maximum intake suggestions. Dropping below the suggested minimum intake may risk muscle loss over time, while somewhere close to a moderate intake will likely be suitable for the majority of us and there really should be no reason for anyone to ever exceed the suggested maximum daily intake. As you can see, the minimum daily protein intake that I'm suggesting is not less than one gram per kilogram of lean body weight. However, unless you lead a pretty much sedentary lifestyle, I would suggest avoiding going this low, especially if you're over 50. Otherwise, you may be putting yourself at risk of accelerating muscle loss. A moderate intake would be in the region of two grams per kilogram of lean body weight, and anything close to this will likely be optimal for the majority of us. 
Now this level of intake is well suited to anyone with a reasonably active lifestyle and will provide sufficient protein for muscle maintenance, growth and recovery following regular resistance exercise. Those with a particularly physically demanding lifestyle, such as professional athletes and bodybuilders, may benefit from increasing their protein intake up to a maximum of 2.5 grams per kilogram of lean body weight. Now, There's no evidence that exceeding this number will offer any additional benefit. If we recognize that both advancing age and activity levels are the two main factors influencing our protein requirements, then by selecting an appropriate number within our 1 gram to 2.5 gram range, we essentially have a pretty sound formula for immediately getting pretty close to our optimal daily protein intake. We can then fine tune this over time based on our results, with self-experimentation and a progress diary being immensely helpful here. And remember that we're all unique individuals and what's optimal for you may not be optimal for the next person. Of course, just as important as the amount of protein ingested is the quality of that protein. Most challenging is for vegans who will almost certainly benefit from using a plant-based protein powder in order to meet their optimal daily protein needs. Whey protein, grass-fed beef, chicken, turkey, fish, eggs and dairy, that makes it easy for the rest of us. And of course, it goes without saying that if your health is important to you, then you should avoid all processed meats and farmed fish. Many thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. There's lots more varied content on the way, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And lastly, as always, take care, be healthy and see you all again soon.